All right, good morning guys. Welcome to uh, another day of school. Welcome back from your break. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I'm going to do a little show and tell. I've got a cool thing that I got in the last week. Uh, this came from my father. I don't know how long it's been in the family, but this is an old Civil War history book from 1883. So I'm really excited to read more about uh, what they thought of the Civil War when it was just a few years out. Um, most of the things I've read so far are not anything surprising, anything I didn't already know, but uh, one thing that is really interesting, you might find interesting too, is balloons. Did you know they used balloons in the Civil War? Balloons were the way of traveling by air before we had airplanes. And in the Civil War, this was really important that you could go and spy on an enemy camp to see what they had. So here we have an enemy camp I've got laid out here. We've got some enemy soldiers, the North and the South, the Union and the Confederacy. And they might be camped across from each other over a little hill and they can't see what's going on. But if they set up a balloon to travel and somebody in the balloon they can float over that enemy camp and they can look down to see what is going on. You can see what kind of guns the people have, you can see what kind of soldiers, how many soldiers, where they're positioned, and that can be really important for discovering the best way to fight your battle. Now the, the uh, balloons would be up in the air and usually they would be tethered, so they would have some kind There, I've got a tether now. So now they would be connected to a, uh, a, a wire or a rope that would keep them connected to their camp. And it wasn't a far stretch to start attaching a telegraph to that. So while they were in the balloon, they could telegraph beep, 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 back down to the ground to actually start in letting the people on the ground know right away where to start moving the troops. Really interesting stuff. All right, so today I'm going to lecture about Fort Sumter. Uh, we're going to do a Civil War lecture. It'll go on for probably a few weeks here. And so I'll start one slideshow, and as we add new details to the slideshow, I will add those to the same slideshow. So you won't have six different slideshows to go through. And that'll be attached to this assignment. Uh, your learning targets for today are, I know the ways the North and the South were different. So you, a lot of you guys already know a bit about that, but you wanna make sure that that's one of your learning targets for the day. And then I know the significance of the election of 1860. That's another important one. We're going to explore both of those by looking at a particular event. We're looking at the attack on Fort Sumter. That is uh, our focal point for today. So if you take a look at the slideshow, you'll see that one of the slides is a timeline, a timeline of events of the attack on Fort Sumter. And it's not that I want you to memorize what happened in March and what happened in April and what happened in December, but I want you to get a feel for the sequence. What happened first? What happened next? Because a lot of this has to do with cause and effect. Something that happened first is the cause of something that happened next. So in November of 1860, November is when we have our election. We're coming up on a big presidential election this November. The next presidential election uh, will also be in November. November is traditionally when we have elections. So this November of 1860 was the year that Abraham Lincoln was elected president. And the North and the South both knew his position on slavery. He was opposed to, to slavery. Um, he wasn't trying to abolish slavery at that point. He was, he was arguing against it, but the South was sure that if he became president, then slavery would be dead and they would um, have to give up their way of life. And we can look into more of that in another lecture, but right now we're focusing again on the attack on Fort Sumter. December of 1860, South Carolina secedes from the United States. So he's elected in November, in December, they say, no, we're out of here. We're, we're not gonna be part of, the, part of the United States anymore. And then by February, there were a total of seven states that had seceded, and then they formed the Confederate States of America. They were now a separate group that were 
in rebellion against the United States. Now this is in interesting because uh, Lincoln hadn't officially become president yet, but they were ready for once he took office to um, to have to fight for the things that they believed were critical to their way of life. April 1861. So we have November, December, February. Eight, seven states have seceded, and then in March, Abraham Lincoln becomes officially president. And then in April the attack on Fort Sumter. And first they started with a demand for turnover Fort Sumter, we want it. And then that what didn't happen, so then they attacked and they were able to take Fort Sumter. The Confederates were able to capture Fort Sumter. Now, to understand why this is significant, there are a few things we want to think about. Number one, where was it? Okay, so it was a port on the Atlantic coast which means it was a great source for commerce, for money going in and out of the southern states. It was intended for coastal defense of the United States, so it was something that was def intended to defend against attackers, so it would be a really good place to have your own fort if you were going to go into a war against somebody. It was South Carolina, which is one of the southern states, a cotton growing state. It was Charleston Harbor, which the city of Charleston, one of the largest states in the southern United States at the time, I think it was second or third largest. I'm going to include a, a link on uh, the notes that let, will let you go explore which cities in the United States were the largest during the time of the Civil War. And the South really only had about three cities that were, that were large, and Charleston was one of them. It was a southern state, it was a slaveholding holding state, it was a cotton growing state. Uh, this is why Fort Sumter's location was significant. All right, our next slide talks about large cities in 1860. Take a look at the map. Notice the difference between where the North and the South had their population. The North had a lot of big cities. A lot of the big cities that were in the North were several times larger than the big cities that were in the South. And then most of the population in the north is gathered around these cities. They still had farming, but more and more the industrial society had brought all of these people into the cities to work in the cities. The south was still almost entirely rural. They had a few cities, but for the most part, they didn't have the industrial centered, uh, centered populations of uh, the north, that the North did. And big cities are very important. They're important for organizing people, organizing resources, for spreading information. Take a look, uh, and the study of cities during the Civil War is important to understanding the strengths that the North and the South had. Why was the attack on Fort Sumter significant? Okay, I'm gonna break this down into four main points. Number one, it was the beginning of violence of the Civil War. We had had violence over slavery up to this point. We had had violence um, in various areas in the United States, in the conflict between the states and between the states and the federal government. But this was the beginning of the fighting of the Civil War. It was the act of taking a military stronghold away from the federal government. This is something that a state is saying, no, I'm not gonna be part of you anymore and I'm taking it away. It was a success for the Confederacy. So once the, the Confederate armies saw that they had a, a federal stronghold, they got, they got a fort, they got a victory, then they were encouraged. They were encouraged to continue and other, other states um, in the coming months would start to secede also. And then it was a loss for the Union. The, the federal government, which as when we talk about them in the armies, we would talk about them as the Union, the federal government was um, now had lost something significant, and that motivated Abraham Lincoln to, to call to arms, say, I, I, need, I need volunteers, I need militiamen from all the different states to come and help put down this rebellion. And that was the beginning of action on the part of the federal government uh, preparing to actually go into battle. All right, questions that you need to answer today. Number one, why did South Carolina secede after Lincoln was elected? So describe the different characteristics of South Carolina and characteristics of Abraham Lincoln. Think about his political views and how the, both the, South Carolina and Lincoln would be motivated by this secession. How were their goals different? Second question, 
And I know I put a lot of questions into that first question, but those smaller questions will help you answer the main question. Second question to answer, why was the attack on Fort Sumter significant? Describe the characteristics of what the fort was, what was its purpose, where was it, what, how, did, how does that play into the differences between the North and the South, and what was the influence the attack had on both the Union and the Confederacy? So how did it motivate them to do one thing or another? So your goals for the day, number one, log in to both Schoology, so you get your attendance recorded, and log in to Google Classroom um, for the, your own individual Google Classroom account. Um, all of the classes have their own Google Classrooms now, so we can narrow down a little bit uh, more personally who is in each class. And then answer the Fort Sumter questions. Use Chapter 14 and my lecture as resources. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.